Hello everyone. Welcome back. So now we will start with the last module which is related to containers. In this video, we will understand what is the concept of containers and how containers differ from virtual machines. I think that every one of you are aware about the concepts of containers in general. So we have seen these big containers being used for shipping the materials from one place to another. Now how they are relevant to the concept of operating systems. So what happens is in a traditional scenario, let us suppose that you have an hardware, so which is your laptop. And then we have an operating system which works on top of the hardware. Now, if you want to use some applications, for example, let us suppose you want to make use of Node.js, then this particular application will have a requirement for a set of libraries and certain dependencies. So you need to resolve all those dependencies, provide whatever libraries are required and make certain changes to the OS if required. Now, let us suppose you want to work on certain other applications also. So there might be an application like MySQL. Then for that application also, you need to have certain libraries, resolve certain dependencies and might be you need to do some changes in the OS. Now all this is true for all other applications that you might want to run. At times what happens is that you require the same library but a different version for one of the applications and you require the same library with a different version for some other application. So how do you resolve this problem? How you come out of this situation? And if you see if there are multiple applications, if you have to resolve the dependencies of each, this means that applications cannot run in isolation. So you end up what in a dependency hell. Now this is where the containers come into play. So what happens in containers is containers will help you to build, ship, deploy and scale out the applications that otherwise has become very difficult in the traditional scenario. So in containers what happens is we have the same hardware, we have the operating system on top of the hardware and then on top of the operating system we have what we call as a container engine for example docker or podman. So these container engines will help to isolate the applications with the help of the OS. So what it happens is now for every application that you want to use we maintain a different image and you can see that all the three images are separated from each other. What we do along with the application we group whatever libraries are required and whatever dependencies are to be resolved. So we make a container image which is complete in itself. Okay, so you as an application developer uh, need not to bother about what kind of dependencies will be required to be resolved. Each container in itself or each container image in itself will be a complete package which you just need to use, deploy and use. Same is the case now let us suppose in one of the systems where you as a developer are working in a traditional scenario even if you are able to resolve all the library all the dependencies you are able to provide all the libraries once you ship that particular application to a destination system where it is to be used if you miss out or the team miss out any of the dependencies the application will not run but in this case you have the same image developed the same image will be shipped from your system to the end system and hence there will be no problem of resolving the dependencies. So this is where the containers help us to resolve all dependencies and you are free from the dependency help matrix. So what are the advantages that the containers has to offer? So there are quite a few. So the first one is it becomes very easy to install the applications. It is less time consuming as compared to the traditional scenario. The other requirement since it is less time consuming there will be also you will be able to independently run the applications as container images. So if you are able to run them independently this means there is no not much problem to resolve the software dependencies. Further it is easy to package out all the applications together along with their libraries and the dependent softwares that you have to get along. 
Next, you can run the applications in isolation that we have seen in the diagram previously. Each application you are able to run independent from the other applications. Finally, it is very easy to scale such scenarios or such applications. Now, this might seem a little similar to the concept of virtual machine, but there is a specific difference between containers and virtual machine. So, we have already seen the scenario or the infrastructure for a container. Now, let us see how the virtual machines actually operate. So, the underlying scenario is the same. So, there is the hardware, then we have the operating system. And now, on top of the operating system, rather than having a container image or the container engine, what we have is we have something called a hypervisor. Now, there are two kinds of hypervisors type 1 and type 2. Type 1 hypervisors they interact or they make use of the hardware directly. Whereas type 2 hypervisors, for example, VMware or the virtual box, which we have been using so far, so they make use of the operating system. Now, on top of the hypervisor, whatever application you want to run in isolation, for that we need to install a separate operating system, which is called the guest operating system. So you can see you can run different operating systems as guest operating systems on top of this hypervisor. Now these operating system or the guest operating systems may be same, may be different. So you can run three instances of Windows, let's suppose, or you can run one instance of Windows, another of Linux, another of Mac. That depends upon whatever is your requirement. Here's the first challenge as compared to containers. Now this guest OS is an OS in itself, the entire OS. So this means you need to dedicate extra space for this. So if the OS setup requires, let us suppose one GB of storage, then to have three guest OS, we need to dedicate 3 GB of the storage plus the CPU plus certain other resources. Now, whatever application you want to run on each of the OS, you can install or resolve the dependencies or the libraries for that particular application. And on top of this, you can run the application in itself. So here also you are able to run the applications in isolation but since the requirement for a guest OS is there, so it will be a little more time consuming, a little more resource consuming as compared to containers. So that is the difference between containers and virtual machines. So I hope that the importance of using containers is clear. In the next video, we will learn how to use Podman for building containers.